we will begin the twelfth lecture on the book of Ecclesiastes. In our last lecture, we were discussing the fourth main point. The fourth main point of chapter 10. Speak and act in wisdom. Verses 10 to 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 10 says, If the iron is blunt and one does not sharpen the edge, he must use more strength. When we work, we need to sharpen the iron. If we do this, our work will go about without any problems. The message is teaching us the lesson that we holy believers must be ready in our faith. We must prepare ourselves through prayer. We must prepare ourselves by keeping our faith. However, this does not come easy. It requires a lot of practice. We may have fallen down today, but we can stand back up tomorrow. Do you know how many times a toddler falls down until he can walk? The child falls down countless times. As he falls, he learns to stand back up. In the end, the child learns how to walk. In order to become holy believers, we must prepare ourselves with prayer. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 We need to be trained in our faith. This will happen when we practice. Thus, we will win the good fight when we sharpen our blunt iron. We must also pray at all times. Prayer becomes a skill. Daniel was able to pass the test because he practiced being godly. He is a person. Daniel chapter 1 verse 8 and verse 15. Daniel passed the test. He passed because he often practiced praying in his faith. Daniel regularly sharpened his iron. He prepared himself with prayer. He prepared himself with faith. That is how he overcame the test. Verse 11 If the serpent bites before it is charmed, there is no advantage to the charmer. The charmer here is a magician. He performs magic tricks with snakes. The magician is bitten by the snake. Who then will come to watch the magic show? No one will come to watch. The magician is bitten before the snake is trained. This means that he has lost to the snake. Spiritually speaking, the person has been bitten by is someone who has lost to the devil. Because the person did not practice, he could not win against the devil. For us to defeat the devil, we must first practice beating the devil. We need to sharpen our iron. Such is the action of a wise believer. We need to be armed with the word of God. Then we are able to win the good fight with the Word 
of God. We must always train ourselves in prayer and in faith. When we trust in God's power, we can grab the snake's tail and use it as a staff. Exodus 4, chapter 4, verse 4. In this way, we must become people of power. In order to do this, we must first trust in the power of God. We need to be skilled people who are not bitten by the snake. 12. The words of a wise man's mouth win him favor, but the lips of a fool consume him. The words of a wise man win him favor. The lips of the fool consume himself. The wise man only speaks words that win him favor. However, the fool without faith exposes his stupidity. Therefore, we must not become like the fool. What happens to the fool in the end? Verse 13 says the fool's end is evil madness. Verse 13 The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness, and the end of his talk is evil madness. What is the ending like for the fool? The fool's end is evil madness. Evil madness is something crazy. The fool speaks words of boasting words of He consumes himself with his own words. Also, the fool ends in evil. Verse 14 A fool multiplies words though no man knows what is to be, and who can tell him what will be after him. In this way, the fool speaks many words. The truth is always simple and clear. However, the liar talks a lot as he gives this excuse and that excuse. This is a characteristic of liars. James 1 verse 19, Proverbs 10 verse 19. We must not be liars. The fool's words have many flaws. He does not know the events of the future, nor does he know about the life after death. Here, it says, and who can tell him what will be after him? This means we do not know their death. The fool does not know the life after death. He does not know the Bible. Verse 15. The toil of a fool wearies him. For he does not know the way to the city. The fool cannot enter the city. This means he cannot enter the world of rest. That is why the fool's words consume himself. His words become evil. The fool also talks a lot. But there is no conclusion to his word. His words do not know what is after him. His words have no rest. On the flip side, how are the words of the wise? If we look at verse 12, it says the words of a wise man win him favor. 
the wise man's words are gracious. He says, God loves you. Believe and be How gracious are these words. Also, the wise person speaks only the truth. He speaks about what is to come. Also, he tells people about rest. When our Jesus Christ returns to this world, he will wipe away all our tears. However, fools will not know salvation, heaven, or rest. Fifth, the land of disaster and the land of blessing. Verses 16 and 17. Verse 16. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child, and your princes feast in the morning. Woe to the land where the king is a child. Because the princes feast in the morning, the nation becomes corrupt, and woe is in the land. Spiritually, there is woe to those with a weak faith. Therefore, must not be like that of a child's. We must become holy people. The holy believer only eats solid food. However, the young person eats milk and remains a child. Hebrews 5 verse 12 the child lacks discernment. Because of this, a nation ruled by a child struggles. Thus, our faith must not be like that of a child's. If our faith is small, the nation perishes, our faith perishes, and the church perishes. We need to grow in our faith. Verse 17 Happy are you, O land, when your king is the son of the nobility, and your princes feast at the proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. On the other hand, a land that is blessed has a king who is of nobility shows mercy people. Like a noble king, he reigns over the nation with a noble character. Here it says that the princes feast at a proper time, and not for drunkenness. The princes are not trying to obtain things in their greed. That is why they feast at proper times for strength. But when the king of a nation is a child, the princes eat, drink, and act in debauchery. However, when the king is gentle and reigns with mercy, the land's princes do not try to get drunk but they eat for their strength. Strength is power. In order to serve a king well, the princes must have power. Won't they be able to rule their people only if they are healthy? Today, pastors of powerful churches share spiritual bread with the congregation and they gain power and grow in faith. Sixth, the lazy person's actions and the result of his actions. Verses 18 and 19. Verse 18. Through sloth the roof sinks in, and through indolence the house leaks. 
the roof sinks in through the sloth. When it rains, the house leaks because it is covered with holes. The lazy person does not rebuild a roof that has collapsed. Laziness is a sin. The most diligent one in the world is our God. God, from the time of creation until now, does not doze off or sleep or sleep, but He works constantly. We must not become lazy people. We need to be diligent. Second Thessalonians chapter three verse ten, Proverbs chapter twenty thirty three, verse chapter nineteen verse twenty four, and Proverbs chapter twenty verse thirteen. Verse nineteen. Bread is made for laughter, and wine gladdens life, and money answers everything. Bread is made for laughter. Wine gladdens life. Money answers everything. Here, the leaders do not does not put his effort in what he does. The leaders only feast and drink wine. When they do this, the nation and the family is perish. They become slaves to money. Seventh, do not curse those in power. Verse twenty. Verse twenty. Even in your thoughts, do not curse the king, nor in your bedroom curse the rich, for a bird of the air will carry your voice, or some winged creature. Tell the matter. The verse taught me, the ones in power, or the rich, even in our thoughts. We must not curse and go against those whom God has appointed. If we do, the organization becomes weak. If we go against the boss of our company, the company will not perform well. That is why the verse tells us not to curse kings. If we do, the birds of the sky will carry our voice to tell the matter. We need to believe and accept that God has appointed. Those who are above us, then the entire organization will do well, and we will be blessed. Now we will study Ecclesiastes chapter eleven. The title of the chapter is "Spread." First. Cast your bread upon the waters, verses one to three. Is right or not? Sow your seed, verses four to six. Third, prepare yourselves when there is light, verses seven and eight. Fourth, the youth must keep judgment in his mind. As he rejoices, verses nine and ten. First, cast your bread upon the waters, verses one to three. Verse one, let us read. Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. The verse is telling us that we should use our possessions for God and for people. Giving our possessions for God may seem like we are throwing bread in the water, but God will compensate us. 
we must become friends with Jesus with unrighteous wealth. Luke chapter 19 verse 9 tells us to make friends for ourselves by unrighteous. Then we will receive our eternal place of dwelling. Thus we must use our possessions for God. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 5 says, Whoever mocks the poor insults his maker. He who is glad at calamity will not go unpunished. Mocking the poor is the same as despising God. Therefore, we must look after the poor. We need to throw our bread upon the waters. This means we should help the poor. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 31 says, Whoever oppresses a poor man insults his maker, but he who is generous to the needy honors him. Proverbs 19 verse 17 says, Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his deed. God is infinitely wealthy. Verse 9 says, As it is written, He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. The verse says, Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days. This means that God will repay us for everything. He will fill us up with many times of what we give. Therefore, we need to use our possessions for God and for our neighbors. Verse 2 Give a portion to seven or even to eight for you know not what disaster may happen on earth. Why should we share what we have? The reason is we do not know what disaster will happen. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 19, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 9. Do we know what will happen tomorrow? Disaster can strike at time. How are we to know if a great disaster will happen tomorrow? How are we to know that our close friends will not suddenly die in one day? Because we do not know when disaster will happen, we must share what is left over with our neighbors. Verse 3 If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. As surely as the tree falls, disaster will come. But the verse says, the tree lies where it falls. If God knocks us down, we cannot stand up. Therefore, when we have possessions, we must cast them onto the water. In the future, it will all come back to us. We do not know when disaster will come upon us. Friend Jesus Christ with your unrighteous possessions. Even the tallest trees fall. I hope that we use our possessions for God when He gives us the strength, opportunity, and possessions. 
Second, whether the time is right or not, sow your seeds. Verses 4 to 6. Verse 4. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. We shouldn't observe the wind and worry about sowing or not sowing. Whether the wind blows or the clouds are many, we simply need to sow seeds. We must not be afraid of the environment. We must not make excuses. If we do not plant because the wind blows or do not harvest because of the clouds, we will see no profit. We need people who are not afraid of failure, but do our best to sow and reap. When doing God's work, we must not be caught up in small incidents or the environment, but we must make our best effort to do His work. Verse 5 As you do not know the way the Spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with child, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. We do not know the way the Spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman. Thus we must not worry about the rain or wind, but we, we must simply do what we must. If, he, if we toil for God, He will compensate us for our efforts. Verse 6 In the morning sow your seed, and at evening withhold not your hand, for you do not know or that, or whether both alike will be good. We must sow our seed in the morning and not withhold our hand at the evening. We do not know if this or that will prosper. Therefore, we must sow the seed in faith. We will bear fruit according to our work. Mark chapter 4 verse 26 says, And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises day and night, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. The seeds sprout while we sleep and wake up. Whether the time is right or not, we must obey the Lord's commands and spread the gospel. Say that we preach because it is windy. We must not say that we cannot go to church because it is raining. We need to follow the Lord's command and preach. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, the Apostle Paul charges Timothy in the presence of God. We must preach in the presence of God who charges us whether the time is right or not. Believe that when we sow with tears, we will reap with shouts of joy. Psalm chapter 126 verses 5 and 6 So do not worry about the wind. Do not worry about the rain. We simply need to go out 
and sow the seed. Third, prepare yourselves when there is light. Verses 7 and 8. Verses 7 and 8. Light is sweet, and it is pleasant for the eyes to see the sun. So if a person rejoice in them all, but let him remember that the days of darkness will be many. All that comes is vanity. We need to believe in the Lord when there is light. We need to do God's work when there is light. We must believe when we have the strength. When the Lord has given us the environment for working, we must be busy in doing work. We need to work when the Lord gives us the opportunity to work. We need to preach the gospel when the doors of the gospel are open. John chapter 12 verses 35 to 36 Romans chapter 13 verses 11 to 14 The days of darkness are the days of great hardship. While we have the light, we need to prepare ourselves for the days of hardship. If we do not live in faith in this world, becomes. Fourth, the youth must keep judgment in his mind as he rejoices. Verses 9 and 10. Verse 9. Rejoice, O young man, in your youth, and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Walk in the ways of your heart and the sight of your eyes. But know that for all these things, God will bring you into judgment. In our youth, we must remember the God, our Creator. If we live carelessly during our youth, God will judge us according to our actions. Our days of youth do not last forever. When we are young, when God has given us the opportunity, we must do more works of faith. If we fear God and live in faith when we are young, we will not regret it later in life. We believers the in strength must not see the situation as an opportunity of the flesh, but we must work for God. Verse 10 Remove vexation from your heart, and put away pain from your body, for youth and the dawn of life are vanity. We must not waste our youth, but we must stray from evil. The days of youth are vanity, and they pass by quickly. The days of youth spent for the pleasures of the flesh last for a while, and then disappear. 1 John chapter 2, verses 16 and 17 Therefore, when we are young, when we have strength, we must do our best in doing God's work. This ends the twelfth lecture on the book of Ecclesiastes. Thank you.